Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is on my intermittent fasting. So I thought I'd put together basically the two main meals that I eat for the day. Uh, I pretty much prepare the first meal, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. And then I'll show you what I'm having for dinner. And uh, if you want to see this in a separate video, I'll put the recipe, you know, like the, the meal that I'm about to make right here in a separate video and you can check that out on the channel. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look at my first meal. It is around 12 o'clock. So I generally eat from about 12.30, one-ish. This usually takes me about 20 minutes to make. You can do it a lot quicker. There's plenty of processes you can cut out or you know, just um, get them done automatically for you, but I like to do them from the start. Uh, otherwise, yeah, sorry, let's go back to the window the, of intermittent fasting that I'm doing is uh, about 12.30, 1-ish, sometimes a bit later, you know, 1.32, around that point. Between 12 and 2, I like to start generally a little bit later, and then I like to finish my last meal by about 8 o'clock at the latest. So the biggest window is about 12 till 8, and generally I do it from about 1 till 7. So I like to do it in about 6 or 7 hours tops. Uh, just gives me enough time well, that I feel good with in uh, digesting, you know, like it's not like it's a huge process or anything, it's just that it's nicer to have some time out that you're not processing food all the time that you're awake. So yeah, sure, I do get hungry and I might do a separate video on that at some point, but I thought I'd just start and just test, you know, well, start with one video on the intermittent fasting and give you a, a brief idea of, of what I'm having. Um, you can calculate the calories if you like. I don't do that anymore. I just look at what, uh, you know, what nutritional content is in the food and it looks like I'm getting enough. You know, I've been doing it for a few months now. I'm sure there could be plenty more time that I could, I could do it for, but overall, the amount of nutrition in that food is much higher than, you can throw a number out there and it's much higher than the majority of the population anyway. So, without further ado, let's jump into the ingredients that I'm using for the recipe and then I'll show you the recipe, you know, completed or halfway through and then completed. So, let's have a look. So, what we're making for the first meal is a big smoothie bowl. So, this is basically all the ingredients that i got here. The first thing I do is make the smoothie part. So, the smoothie is a base of mangoes and oranges, spinach and coconut yogurt. So what I do first is juice the oranges. So like I was saying, you can cut out some uh, steps in the process and buy your own juice or anything like that. But in this case, I like to juice all my own oranges and I'll do about six of these or basically I want to get about 600 ml of orange juice. It's not like an exact science, it's just basically what's evolved over time. Then I've put in the spinach, so I've got the oranges, then I put in the spinach to blend of our, you know, with our tools over here. Basically jam pack the smoothie bl blender full of the spinach. Blitz that so that it's all nice and ground up. Then I hit up the mangoes and coconut yogurt, not too much of this, it's just more for, for taste. Blitz that again and that gives us our smoothie bowl. So. I'll do the next lot of ingredients and then I'll go through why I choose these things in particular. I've got the, so put the smoothie bowl in, smoothie part of the bowl, then I go through and put on top uh, all of these things here that you see here. So I've got ground flax meal, uh, pita seeds, sunflower seeds, a little bit of chia seeds, what is this, coconut, so desiccated coconut, whatever you find that you like. Uh, raw buckwheat grounds. I really like this because it's a bit more crunch and you know, I just felt like I needed some sort of cereal base in there uh, Before I found this or I think Bethany bought this and just left it behind So I've started putting that on my cereal too to use that up. So that's a gluten-free vegan sort of thing over there All right, and then lastly, I top it with a bit of fruit. So it's winter here, or coming out of winter. So what's in season now are pears, strawberries are the main things that you see at the shop. And then in summer, I will throw on fresh mango on top or banana. They're, they're, they're kind of the two main staples. So I just alternate between seasons, whatever's in, obviously in season, and that obviously makes it cheaper. So reasons why. Now, I hit up the oranges because they are, as we all know, high in vitamin C. They're great after training and, you know, just really hydrating overall. Spinach, that is jam-packed with all of the green goodness. So, it's like I'm basically trying to get everything, all of my nutrients in the meal, uh, you know, my first meal of the day, which is around lunchtime, because I'm only eating twice. So, it's really important that I get all of the 
nutritional content in there. So the spinach, we all know it's high in iron, protein, um, calcium, magnesium, vitamins, minerals, everything you can think of, green leafy veg. And I choose the spinach because this is what I can pick up at my local fruit shop. These are half kilo bags, so that cost me uh, seven bucks. Half kilo, what's that, like a pound for you guys in the, in the US. Frozen mango, that's pretty much just the thickener that I like to, to make the smoothie thick with. No other particular reason for that apart from it tastes good and it makes the smoothie great. Coconut yogurt, that's a bit more fats to the meal. I do have a lot of fats on top, but this also just gives it a nice flavor. And if you think any of this stuff actually makes a difference, then there you can call the cultures, uh, you know, some sort of pro prebiotic crap going on there. I don't really pay too much attention to that, but I think it's just a nice little addition and it makes it taste good. So, moving on to the toppings. Flax meal, this is the omega-3s for the vegans. So, that's why I put on a lot of um, flax meal, you'll see in a moment. Pepita seeds, high in protein. Again, all your good fats and minerals with the seeds. As you can notice, I don't use nuts. I mean, this says almonds, but you're not really gonna pick up too much almonds out of a little bit of cereal. You don't actually have to use that either. I only just started putting that in the last couple of days. Uh, buckwheat, I liked for the crunch and I wanted something gluten free as well. Um, apart from that, I just see it as a reasonable protein source. I crunch it really well so it makes me chew a lot more uh, as I'm getting through the smoothie. Sunflower seeds, the same deal, you know, nice protein fats in there as well. I think this one is probably one of the better ones, pepita seeds and omega-3s. Again, the chia seeds for the omega-3s. And then you get your nice balance of omega-3, omega-6 in that as well. Coconut, that one's just purely for flavor, but you know, if you believe in the benefits of coconut for your diet, then there you go, coconut and coconut there. Uh, I say do you, if you believe in it, because there's obviously conflicting scientific research. You know, one side says yes, the other side says, well, there's not really any big difference, so, you know, use it if you want. As I said, the toppings, this is the stuff that's in season right now. We've got the berries, so we all know berries are high in antioxidants. Obviously blueberries, raspberries, black berries, all that stuff is gonna be better than strawberries, but that's in season in Australia. Berries, then they, they kind of come in season in Australia, but they're just super expensive for the amount that I would use. Like a small punnet might be two, three dollars at the very best. Normally it sits at five bucks for a punnet. And if I'm using one of those a day on this meal, you know, it's like $35 a week just on one small thing of blueberries. That's a bit ridiculous in my opinion. Pear on top, again, in season. So that you can see there, that's why I've chosen all of these bits and pieces. If you throw that into a chronometer, you'll see the absolute magnificent benefits of the seeds and the greens. And now I'll make it taste all sweet. So let's get into that. It's been long enough for me to go over each of the ingredients. I'll put it together nice and quick and we'll be done with this video in no time. There are all the oranges cut up, ready for juicing. Smash that out, get it up to about here. Spinach, oranges in there, ready, let's do it. So all the juice is done. That's where we ended up, just over half a litre there you can see. Right, there we go. So yeah, about 600 mil. Then the pulp that comes out of all those oranges, I throw into the bottom of the blender, uh, jam pack this full of the, the spinach that I just showed you there. So this bag's half a kilo, it lasts me about four to five days. So I'd probably say there may be 100 grams of spinach in there. And that's about as much as I can pack into this blender here, which is a perfect size for my meal in that bowl. Uh, I've also just cut up the fruit there, so it's like four strawberries and that whole pear, which I'll put on at the end. So all that's left now is to pour a little bit of this onto this, or well, pretty much all of it, and then I will blitz this one up. So yeah, I blitz this first before I put the frozens on, uh, so that I can get the spinach to a nice consistency throughout the whole smoothie. So I uh, will come back once I've got all of this in the bowl, you know how mango and coconut goes into there you know it's about three teaspoons of the coconut and uh, yeah I just basically pack the the mango to about that much once this is all liquid so that's a kilo bag let's say about 150 200 grams of frozen mango next part is we pour the smoothie in I'm gonna see if I can do this all one-handed so there's the smoothie and I like to start with the flax so that just goes straight on top like that that's my nice little base going on and let's go with the coconut next. All the way around. Now I could make it pretty, but I want to get a bit of this in every single bite. That's why 
I make it uh, all the way around the bowl. Let's go pepitas. Now you can see I don't measure it, I just cover the base and that's been pretty good so far for how much I like to eat. Sunflower seeds. Boom. Chia seeds. A little bit of this because I hate when they get stuck in my teeth. It annoys the shit out of me. Alright, last thing before the battery goes flat on this. Uh, raw buckwheat. Oh, and one more thing. Let's just do a bit of this because it's, it's fun. Boom, that's the cereal on top. So the last thing to go on, I thought that was it, but it's actually the fruit. Let's grab that, bring her over here. And again, this could be so much prettier, but I want to get a piece of the fruit in every single bite, just like I do with all of the seeds. That is my bowl there. I would say that's a solid, bloody heavy bowl. I don't know how many liters, kilos, whatever that is, but if I was to get that in a breakfast shop, there's no way I'm getting that size. That is the size that I want to get. Let's see how deep that is. Uh, I'd say that's at least two to three servings in a breakfast shop. So if you're looking at 15 to up, you know, upwards of 14, 15 dollars per, you know, uh, smoothie bowl, it's an easy 40 bucks right there that they would charge. I had some papaya in the cupboard. It was all ripening up, so I thought I would take that out, have a little bit of that to begin. Now I'm about to start eating after I took a few photos. And I have a little bit of orange juice left over from that full smoothie that I made and what I normally do is just throw that into the blender and you know, clean up all the sides which was full of the, the green after I'd blended all that together. You know, pour the smoothie out and then the smoothie thing is, you know, full and boom, I put the orange juice in and that's my little drink to go on the side. So, now I'm about to hit meal one and it is, let's have a look, it is 1pm. Alright guys, we're back with dinner. So this is the second part of the intermittent fasting video. So you've got the first meal there, and this is meal number two. Let's make it a quick one because I know the video is pretty long already. Alright, so my wonderful girlfriend sitting right over here, all blowed out, um, it has made a dal. Yes, that doesn't look too good there, but I've warmed up a little section of it and we all know that dal doesn't always look the best, but it tastes absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, that's my next part there. I'm gonna have, you can see there, probably about that much rice. So my hand, yeah, I put a, yeah, I put two cups of dried rice into this. That's made a shit ton of rice. And yeah, I probably have of dry rice, maybe three quarters of a cup. And then, yeah, that's a fair bit of dal. I'll probably eat a little bit more than that when I get home. We're going to take this out to the hill and just have a, a dinner outside. So uh, yeah, I'm going to fill this up probably right to the top. That much rice. I don't know how much that is. Three quarters of a dry cup and that ton of dal. So uh, yeah, that's my, my dinner. And if I happen to get a little bit more hungry later, I might have some greens, but then I'll probably have something else like um, some nuts with some chocolate, so like dark chocolate. Maybe a little bit of fruit to go with that. That's usually sort of what I'll finish with. So yeah, I hope you like that. Thanks for joining this video. And yeah, if you liked it, remember to hit like down below and let me know if you want to know more about uh, what, you know, my diet, intermittent fasting, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the next video. Remember to subscribe, all the good stuff down there. Catch you then. Take care. Peace out. Hey guys, this is a little bit of a late entrance to the video of the intermittent fasting, but I wanted to drop in what I have changed just a little bit um, since I first recorded the smoothie bowl, and that is putting in this little recipe here. Now I'm putting this in because uh, I changed up the smoothie bowl to be just um, a smoothie, so I got rid of some of the little bits and pieces like the, uh, the buckwheat, but basically you could do either or, because that meal is quite big on its own, but I just wanted to make things a little bit quicker, so I do it all in a smoothie, put the seeds into the smoothie, and then I have a bowl of like a rice porridge, basically. So here it is here. I've got the rice flakes in there that's cooking with the almond milk. So it's just the cheapo brand, unsweetened, because that's what I like there. It smells really good. Uh, that's just a cup of rice flakes. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in that, I put cinnamon. So I just put, a, I put a lot of this actually. I don't know, is that a lot for you guys? Boom, that's a lot. And um, I just put anything afterwards, so it's not really helpful, but basically, 
I use a, a sweetener. So if this is, is this how you break it up, so you choose whatever you like. I uh, choose a sweetener, and then I put something else um, for a bit of flavor, maybe a bit of fat. So you can, I, I, I'm using peanut butter at the moment because you know I'm just running out of this thing. And then on top of that, once it's all cooked, I'll throw these strawberries. So it's about six big strawberries on top there, as you can see. That is my smoothie from before. So basically, my rice porridge will look like that. Is it right there? So. That's the uh, rice porridge all done. Uh, throw a little bit more of this on top. And strawberries, almond milk, carob molasses. That was just something I picked up at the Lebanese store. Um, I used up some rice malt syrup, but you can use anything else there. Probably don't even need it. And then I was just using up peanut butter. So that is it. That's pretty much where I'm at. The, uh, the smoothie, that bowl, bit of a break, coffee, stuff like that. I've got a coffee machine ready to go. And then the dinner that you saw just before, the dal's been a pretty big thing for me lately. Um, lentil dal, lots of protein. All right, that's it. All right, quick ending video. That's the view, heading up to the hill with the dinner's rice and the dal. Look at that, amazing. The service is coming in, the night is over.